Okay, a student asked a really good question in office hours today and made me realize that both I and the textbook had sort of glossed over an issue. So we state that if you have a Hamiltonian system, so that I know that my solutions are just the level curves for my Hamiltonian function, that if I have an equilibrium point, it can't be a sink or a source, whether it's a regular sink or source or a spiral sink or source. Okay. They sort of say that can't happen. Didn't really address why. I want to take a look at why. Okay. So let's just suppose that I do have a Hamiltonian system and I've got an equilibrium point here. And let's just suppose it was a sink so that all of the solutions around it would be approaching that point. Now, I don't know what they do as we move farther away. They might do wacky stuff around. But if I just look nearby, I've got a bunch of solution curves that are approaching that one point. Okay. Well, all of these solution curves have to be level curves for this function h. And I know that this function must be a continuous function. Now, I know that because in order for the method of Hamiltonian systems to work, I used, in checking to see whether um, it's Hamiltonian, I checked for the equality of mixed partials. And the equality of mixed partials holds if those second partials are continuous. And in order to have continuous second partials, I'm going to need that the original function was continuous as well. Okay, so I know I have a continuous function here. And all of these curves would have to be level curves for that. But they could be level curves for different values. So maybe this is a level curve for 2. So along this curve, h is taking on a value of 2. But this is a level curve for negative 5. So along this curve, my function is negative 5. Maybe this is a level curve for pi. So along this curve, h is taking on the value of pi. Okay. If I have level curves for different values, then I can get arbitrarily close to this point with h of x, y taking on a value of negative 5. And I can get arbitrarily close to that point with h of x, y taking on a value of pi. And I can get arbitrarily close to that point with h of x, y taking on a value of 2. But then what's the value of h of x, y here? It has to be, because this is a, a continuous function, it has to be the limit of the values that I get as I get arbitrarily close. But that limit won't exist because I can get arbitrarily close and have a value of h of 2 or negative 5 or pi or whatever these level curves are, so my function would fail to be continuous unless all of these curves, plus all the other ones that I didn't bother to draw, were level curves for the same value, which would mean that h was just a constant function. And of course, if I have a constant function, that's really boring, because if I have a constant function, both of my derivatives are 0. And if I'm trying to solve a system, x prime equals 0, y prime equals 0. Technically, yes, that is Hamiltonian. But if your approach to solving that is to try to find the Hamiltonian function, you're kind of missing that that basically says every point is an equilibrium solution. So it's incredibly boring. Okay? And if every point were an equilibrium solution, I still wouldn't have a sink. Because if every point is an equilibrium solution, nothing's approaching anything. Everything's just sitting there being very, very still. Okay. So that's why, if it's Hamiltonian, we can't have a sink of any type. And it's also why we can't have a source of any type. Because if this were a source, all I'd do is change the direction on these curves. But I'd still, as t approached negative infinity, be getting arbitrarily close to this point. And so my function would still not be able to be continuous at that equilibrium point.